empty nose syndrome. You might have heard about that, but that's when usually you remove the inferior turbinates, and it's not a good thing. We have patients that have basically it's ruined their life. Some of them, not all of them. And really what happened is, is the air goes in your nose. It's such a big, what we call circular area, that the air bounces off of different parts of the nose, and there's no resistance so that you can feel the air going in your nose, you can feel it going in, that's resistance. But when there's a huge, gigantic tunnel per se, you can't feel any air going in your nose and you feel like you have chronic nasal obstruction, which can drive patients crazy. You could also have nosebleeds and have a dry nose. There's not a lot of great fixes for that. And one of the things there is a doctor, if I'm not mistaken, up in uh, the Stanford area, who does work with over-resected inferior turbinates. Uh, but this is a major problem, and that's why when I'm doing a rhinoplasty, I just actually what we call lateralize the bones. I kind of squish the little bones without removing any tissue. I think that's the safest way to go. So we always want to be conservative with turbinates. You do not want to have a turbinectomy removing the turbinates. It can be a horrible outcome for you.